And I like how you phrased it as an insurance policy. You know, I, I like to protect the things that are important to me and my money as well as my freedom are important to me. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. With me, as always, we got Matt Jones. Matt, how are you doing? I'm doing excellent. How about you, Todd? Oh, man, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, just got back from being out of town for many days. We went to, to uh, Nashville. My daughter had a gymnastics competition, so that was fun. She, they do one out-of-state meet a year. We went to Nashville this year. We stayed at the Gaylord Opryland uh, Hotel Event Center. That place. Have you ever been there, Matt? I have not. It, it's it's worth just going and checking out that place is enormous it's like a small city in itself there's tons of, of shops there restaurants you know obviously the, all the event center space uh, outside they had a skating rink uh, out there they had a sledding hill that they kind of set up and some other winter things, live music every every day. So that was kind of fun. And it actually snowed when we were there, uh, which, of course, everybody's got their iPhones out there recording the snow. They thought it was amazing. And we're like, uh, you know, it kind of snows a lot in Minnesota. So I don't know what you guys are so excited about, but it was it was a good time. Um, she did well, which is always awesome. She She got her highest score she's ever gotten. So that was cool. I uh, always happy to, um, you know, when the, when the daughter goes out of state to, then she has a, a good meet, uh, then she's happy. Then we're all happy. Right. Uh, so that was fun. And then after, so we were there from Thursday through Monday, the kids and the wife, they flew home. They were stuck in the airport for the entire day. Monday, I felt so bad for them. They got to the airport, their plane had a mechanical issue and they were stuck in the airport. I don't think they got, they, I think, what, what did we get to the airport? I brought, we, we went to the airport together and then I rented a car, uh, at the airport. Um, but I think we were there at like 10 AM and they finally got home at like 10 30 PM. So mm -hmm. they had a long time in the airport. They were, they were not excited, uh, to, to <laughs> say the least, but yeah, it was great because then I took, uh, I took advantage of being there. So I went to, um, uh, I went and met a couple brokers in the Nashville area, talked to them about, you know, obviously about Nashville, about some of the cities around Nashville, Chattanooga, Knoxville, uh, Huntsville, uh, some, some Kentucky uh, areas. And, and so had some really good conversations with those brokers have a couple deals coming our way already uh, from that. So that was, uh, was, was huge. And then, uh, drove up to Louisville where, uh, I inspected a property, uh, there and then flew down to Memphis where we've got a couple big projects going on and, uh, was able to meet with our construction team and really hammer out a lot of details, a lot of important things, um, that was just nice to be on site. So super important to get yourself on site when you get these properties under contract and actually buy them. Um, so yeah. It was great. Oh, action packed week. Action packed, like well, continuation, right? Two, 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 two different weeks, but yeah, action packed uh, time there. So it was, it was good. It was definitely needed um, to get to those properties, and obviously fun to hang out with the family and, and watch my daughter compete. So it was a, a little bit of both. Excellent. Yeah, man. So Matt, uh, what are, what are we gonna hit on today? Well, something that uh, you know a lot of people. Um, you know, I need a clarification on it's the difference between a JV or joint venture versus a syndication because mm -hmm. they look a lot alike. And, you know, if you do it wrong, then you, know, you can be at risk of, of fines and potentially jail. So you don't want to do it wrong. Yeah. And one of the reasons I, I want to cover this is because I saw, uh, you know, uh, I'm a you know, Facebook group and somebody was talking about how they set their JV deals up and, and um, I'm like, yeah, that's not a JV deal. That should be a syndication. They're taking multiple people into their deals. Those are th those people are passive investors, and those investors um, should be 
treated as limited partners, but they're being treated as general partners. They think it's a great thing because everybody has general partnership and they all have a a say in, uh, yeah, but they're passive. And it doesn't matter if it's your dad, if it's your brother, uh, uncle, or a friend, family, it doesn't matter who it is. If they're passive, you should not be setting up a JV deal. So JV deal, what, what is a JV deal? A joint venture, right? So joint venture means that both parties or all five parties or how many you have involved joint. So that means they all have a role in the company and it needs to be just more than they put money into it right? It can't be, do they just put more money into it? It needs to be an important role. It needs to be, they have decision-making, right? It needs, they actually need a real role in the, in the company. Now, if you want to get creative, could you probably play in some gray area there? And if they're passive, they have kind of a role, but kind of sure you can, if you want to. Me personally, I choose not to because I don't like jail uh, and I don't like the, I don't, well, I, maybe I don't, maybe I yeah, do you, like you've it. never I've been never to jail. Been, How do you know? I, I have never been in it. No, no. So maybe I would like it. Uh, free <laughs> meals. You know, they tuck you yeah. in at night, I think, mm-hmm. um, you know, so, so it sounds nice. Uh, but I also don't want to put my investors at risk. I don't want to put myself at risk and our, our money's at risk if we're playing in the gray area. So for me, I just choose not to. For you, if that's what you want to do, so be it. But that that's what a JV is meant to be, is Matt, you and I form a JV partnership. Maybe we bring in another guy or two, and we're all doing certain things. So maybe you're, you're underwriting uh, the deal. Uh, maybe I am uh, running the construction phase. Uh, then the deal, cl- you know, the deal closes, I'm continuing running the construction phase and, and now you're the, the asset manager, whatever it is, you know, but we have our, our specific roles. And if, um, you know, two, three years from now, we get an offer coming in, Matt, you look at that offer, you say, Hey, I want to sell it. I look at the offer, say, yeah, Matt, I agree. Let's sell. And, and we sell, you know, we, but, we have specific roles. We have specific decision-making capabilities. Here's the other big thing with the JV that can be a huge issue. If you set up a JV with passive investors, so in a syndication, I'm getting equity in the property as the GP without putting money into it. That's okay. With a JV, if I get any extra equity without putting money into it, that is taxed at ordinary income. That extra equity is taxed immediately at ordinary income. And so that's an issue. So if I've got, and, and I know some of you who just recently did this, okay, their investor put in all of the money. Okay, I, I, I don't recall what it was. Let's call it a, a uh, $500,000. Their investor put in $500,000. They put in zero, but they got 30% of the equity. So it's now it's a 70, 30 split. Okay. So now they own 30%. Well, what do they have to do for that $30,000? They're taxed for, for that 30% uh, percent equity. They're taxed based on the amount that was put in. So $500,000. So they're taxed on what's that like a hundred and I don't know, do yeah. the math, huh? you know, so they're taxed on, you know, cl- probably cl- close to hundred, close to $200,000. Right. That's what they're taxed on. Ordinary income immediately. So, so is- that's a big deal as well. Is that uh, uh, the equity proportional to the money that you put in to make it uh, covered? Like, for example, let, let's say I put in the vast majority of the money uh, into a deal and, and you and I had a JV and you only put in a dollar. 
would that exempt you from the ordinary uh, tax income? No, then I would have to pay unless I took a dollar's worth of shares. Hmm. So if I took, if I took, if you put in, in, in a, you know, a million and I put in a dollar, I would only get that percentage, um, you know, one out of a million percentage, right? If I took any more, I get taxed on that as ordinary income, even though I didn't realize it, but I, but I realized the equity. So I have to get taxed. Now I'm not a CPA, right? So talk to your CPA about this and make sure that that's accurate, but that's how it's been explained to me. And so I'm not going to mess around with it because my CPA and actually more than just my CPA, several CPAs have told me the same thing. So I don't want to mess with it. That doesn't make, that doesn't sound fun to me. So I'm not going to do that. Right. And I've asked, is there a way to get around it? Can we set up different classes to do different things? And the answer has always been no, there's, you're, you're still going to get stuck with it. So what should we do? Well, if you're going to do a JV, Matt, you put $500,000 in, I put $500,000 in, we're 50, 50 partners, right? If we got a third person and they put $500,000 in, we're a third, third, or third, right? If they put in less, then their portion should be equal to what they put in. That's how I understand. Again, I'm not an attorney and I'm not a CPA. So talk with your attorney and talk with your CPA. Who should you be talking to? And I think that's a that's another thing is a lot of people will go to their attorney or their CPA that doesn't really understand this stuff and they will give them advice, which is bad, right? So an attorney has set up a, a ton of LLCs before. Right. So they're, they're helping you set up this LLC. You're giving them guidance. They're setting it up. Great. They set up this joint venture. They don't necessarily understand all the tax implications. They don't necessarily even know the securities rules. So are you talking with enough attorneys to be able to understand what you're doing? And is that the right way? Just because it's an attorney doesn't mean it's correct. You've got to use the right attorneys and you've got to, I like getting multiple pieces of advice. So securities attorneys, I have talked with probably 15 different securities attorneys over the last couple of years. I get my advice from multiple securities attorneys. I take, and if I hear something different that I've never heard before, I will ask other security attorneys about that, right? To try to verify it. So I think it's really important if you're trying to set up something to be talking to multiple different attorneys, try to figure out what's the best avenue. So again, could you do a joint venture with somebody who's a little bit more passive potentially, but you want to make sure they have good roles and responsibilities that actually make sense that really make them an active now investor. So they have to be active. Um, you need some documentation of these roles. Yeah, for sure. You, yeah, you have to have your your operating agreement and and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to tell you that the North Star Real Estate Conference is going to be this May 2nd and 3rd in the Twin Cities. We're going to have amazing speakers there who will add great value to you. But the real value is in the networking where you can meet potential partners, learn about deals, and make some real money. Our three pillars are connect, learn, and succeed because that's what you're going to do. So sign up today at northstarunlimited.live and use coupon code EARLYBIRD for $100 off your ticket. Why, why do people do it? There, there's a couple of reasons. People, people do it because it's a lot cheaper. I can set up a, a multi-member LLC with an attorney for under, under $2,000. A lot of, you know, if, if it's fairly simple, it's, it's going to be under a thousand dollars. If it's complex, maybe a couple grand where a security, you know, if I, if I do a, a you know, your kind of syndication, it's going to be closer to, you know, depending on what you're doing, 10 at the kind of the lower end to, to 30 at the high I end and maybe even higher, depending on what you're doing. If you're doing very complex, it might be even more than 30. So you can see there's a big difference there, right? Uh, the other thing is uh, 
some investors like the idea of being considered a general partner. They don't like the word limited partner. They feel like they're giving up too much control. And so as a general partner, they feel like they've got control, even though you know, you're probably setting up to where they don't really have control because they're passive, right? But they feel like they've got the control. So investors oftentimes like it. And again, can we set it up as a joint venture? Maybe just again, just do it right. Listen to what I said earlier. Think about your own setup and decide if you can do it that way. So syndication, you know, quite simply is if I've got one or more passive investors, it should be a syndication. And so then I would set up an LP share, a limited partner share, and I would set up a GP share, a general partnership share. Okay. And the general partner is the one controlling the deal, the one operating the deal, the one uh, bringing the deal, that all that type of stuff. And, and they're, they're, they have the say in it. The limited partner, they don't have really the say in it, but they do have shares, right? They do have ownership. So they are getting the tax benefits. They are getting the depreciation. Um, they do actually have shares in the company that's holding the real estate. So that's important to understand. And again, it's a passive investor. It could be one. It could be your dad. That could be your passive investor, but it's still, as far as what I've been told by attorneys, should be set up as a securities offering. So, uh, you know, the JV uh, structure has a lot less upfront costs as compared to a syndication. And so that's why I think it's appealing to a lot of people to try to, you know, maneuver a situation into being a, a JV when it really should be a syndication. Right. Suppose suppose uh, I were to do that. Uh, where it's I set simpler up simpler to, mm -hmm. co cost effective and simple. Yep. And suppose I, I were set up a JV, but it's actually a syndication. How is the SEC going to catch me? Yeah, good question, right? Fair question. How is the SEC going to catch you? I don't know. Probably not. They're probably not going to catch you. So why wouldn't you do it the cheaper way? It's an insurance policy. If they do catch you, if I would say the, the easiest way for them to catch you is if the deal goes south and somebody and the deal is unhappy and decides to sue. That's the way that some, that, all of a sudden then this unravels and now we've got a big deal. We've got a big problem on our hands. SEC sometimes audits companies, usually because they get some sort of tip. They're not like the, um, at least I, I don't believe, uh, I haven't heard that they're, they're, they're not like doing random audits, like, um, you know, like tax audits. Right. But, Sometimes they'll do a, a, an audit. Sometimes they'll, they'll do an investigation into somebody that they maybe get a tip. So again, you're talking on a podcast about what you're doing. Some or you're mentioning it on Facebook or you're mentioning it at a conference or, you know, you talk to a potential investor and they're like, that's not right. And they decide to tell somebody else and, or, you know, somehow it gets out. And the SEC comes knocking on your door. Now you got to prove that you're doing everything legit, right? That sounds like it would never happen. I do know several people that have been audited by the SEC because of similar situations. So it's an insurance policy. Have I been audited by the SEC? No, no, SEC's never ask me a question. I've never been contacted by them. Will I potentially, but will, do I sleep well at night knowing that I'm doing it right? Absolutely. So it would suck because you got to show a lot of paperwork and all that kind of stuff. And anytime the government wants information from you, you know, it's, it's going to be stressful and you're going to have to put a lot of effort into it. But same time, we know we're doing it right. We've got all the documentation and, and we've got good attorneys behind us and we've gotten advice from multiple attorneys, all that kind of stuff. So it's an insurance policy. That's as simple as it is. What kind of fines are, you know, a potential for an illegal syndication? 
You know, I... <sighs> I don't know. Uh, I heard of a fine for a, a syndicator that was advertising um, that shouldn't have been advertising. Uh, they were doing a 506B offering and they were advertising on Facebook. I believe that was a $250,000 fine, um, if I remember right. Uh, and, and they were only raising like $800,000 or something like that. So that's a big <laughs> fine for what they're raising. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure, Matt, that's a, that's a, that's a very good question. It's a question I just don't have an answer for, uh, but I, I would guess it would be decent amount. It's not going to be like a thousand dollars. I would guess it's going to be into the, you know, at least five to six figure uh, amount. And I like how you phrased it as an insurance policy. You know, I, I like to protect the things that are important to me and my money as well as my freedom are important to me. So I want to well, protect those. And your investors' money too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the thing is, is you got to remember, you're putting your investors at risk. You, it's not just you, right? You're putting yourself at risk, but they're at risk too, because they get profits based on the profitability of the company. And if the company doesn't have profitability because it's getting fined, they're not going to get their money, right? And so they're at risk as well. So yeah, just, you know, do that. I, when I first started, I was definitely more willing to play in kind of the, the gray area, right? I, I never deliberately would break rules, but if I thought, Hey, you know, this is close enough and yeah, I, I could see how I could make an argument. I would look at potentially doing it. And, and so I did JV deals. Uh, quite frankly, I didn't do, I didn't do JV deals because I was playing in the gray area. I did them because I didn't know that I couldn't do them the way I was doing them. I, I was just ignorant, which is why I'm putting the word out there, which was why I try to tell people some of these things that I've learned. I was just ignorant. I didn't know. I didn't talk to attorney or the right attorneys. I talked to like one attorney and he's like, yeah, we can figure that out. You know, okay, let's figure it out. And so we set it up and it wasn't the way we do it. Right. Now, now I know, now I know better, but I, unfortunately I put myself and that investor at risk and fortunately it worked out, right? We made money. Every we've sold the properties. Uh, everybody is happy in the end, but I won't do it again. Um, and now I, I make sure that so before I, like I didn't want to use attorneys. Like my, my mindset was, I don't need to use an attorney. So I, yeah, I would use them, but I would find the cheaper attorney or I, you know, I, I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't talk to multiple attorneys because that was going to cost me potentially cost me money. Right. I'd only talk to one. Um, and I'd talk to the, you know, the, the, the cheaper one. Um, that's just how it was. Uh, because I, I just didn't think it was necessary. Now, as I've built a bigger company, I've realized that, no, I want to protect myself. I want to protect the company. I want to protect my family and I want to protect my investors. I want to make sure we're just doing it right. Like th there's no point to doing it wrong. And if you screw over your investors, your, your reputation is going to go down the toilet. Yeah. Yeah. Then, I mean, yeah, it, it totally changes obviously your business and, and what you can do and Obviously, we, we've we've pounded in. Hopefully, people are listening and understanding what what we're talking about. If you don't, you know, I'm I'm happy to talk to people about it. But I, I would reach out to, to your attorney uh, and your CPA. Those are the the professionals that you want to talk to. And like I, I've said multiple times, I would be calling multiple attorneys and multiple CPAs to make sure that you're getting the answers that you want and find reputable ones. So get referrals, make sure they're, they're actually specializing in this type of deal. Yeah. And if you're, if you want to be a professional about this, you gotta, you gotta act professional and, and make sure everything your ducks are in a row and everything's clean cut. Yep. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of great information out there. Uh, there's a lot of bad information out there. So be careful of the information you listen to. And like you said, I'm not a CPA. I'm not an attorney. Don't listen to me. Take everything that you heard today and use it as a, okay, now I need to research this. Right. And that's what you should be doing every time you hear 
advice is you should be going, okay, that was really interesting. Let me research that. Let me figure that out. Let me connect with multiple people to verify what that person just said. And when somebody tells you that, Hey, yeah, this is what I do. I do this JV deal, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, that sounds sweet. That sounds interesting. I'm going to do that. Well, verify it, make sure that that's the right way to do it. Right. Um, there's, there's many people doing things wrong. There's many people doing things right. And a lot of people that are doing things wrong are, they're not doing it maliciously. They're doing it out of ignorance. They're doing it because they don't know any better. Um, that's just how it is. And so they might give you a bad piece of advice. So to, uh, with any piece of advice, you know, just take it for what it is and, and do your own research and make sure you, you understand what you're getting yourself into. Excellent. Speaking of advice, Matt, we're changing the North star real estate conference to may. Um, so anybody listening still may 2nd and 3rd, 2022, may 2nd, 3rd, 2022, we're having the North star real estate conference, and it's going to be similar to what we've had in the past. We're, we're continuing to try to make it better and better. Um, and, and so we haven't announced speakers yet. I will be speaking. Uh, I can tell you that, but uh, we will have some uh, amazing speakers again, just like we had last year and the years previous. And, um, and it's going to be covering, you know, really everything cash flow in real estate. So we're covering residential. Uh, last year we hit on some Airbnbs, we hit on uh, mobile home parks, um, a lot of commercial retail, uh, multifamily, senior housing. Um, so we'll be covering a lot of the same topics and, and potentially some new topics as well or some new kind of niche industries uh, as well. And, and of course, we'll be covering syndication, joint venture, um, all, what all that kind of stuff looks like too. So um, they can, people can, everybody can get their tickets now, right, Matt? Yep. Yep. Available at North Star Unlimited dot live. North Star Unlimited dot live. Um, you put that in the show notes that people, way people can click. There's early bird tickets right now. Uh, and there's VIP tickets while they last. So, uh, you know, grab your tickets now. I know a lot of people like to wait till the last minute, but um, it'd be great if you could grab your tickets now so that we, we, we know how many people are coming. Um, so go to NorthStarUnlimited.live, get your ticket, uh, VIP, if you want to hang out with myself and all the other speakers and, and be able to have dinner and free dinner, or including your ticket. Um, and, and really just get the most out of the conference as possible. Yep. And my favorite part of the conference is the networking. Well, yeah. Yeah, I think we make a, a stronger effort than most conferences to, to really guide and, and have great networking. And that's where you're yeah. going to meet potential partners and, and learn about deals and, and make some real money. Yeah. And this year I'm looking at, um, to get everybody a badge essentially that it just has a QR code with everybody's contact information on that way. Nobody has to worry about, Oh, I left my business cards at home. Uh, we can just, was a scan your name badge with the QR code and it automatically brings it to our phone. And now we can put that contact information directly in our phone. So that's going to be cool as well. Uh, just help with the networking, just little things like that to where we can uh, network a little bit easier. I love it. So, all right, Matt. Well, uh, that's all I got. Do you have anything else? That's it for today. All right. You have a fantastic rest of the day. Everybody listening, have a fantastic rest of the day. Make every day a Saturday. Sounds good. Hey, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you being a loyal listener. Say, I would love to have you go on to our Facebook page and subscribe. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Go on to iTunes or wherever you listen and give us a rating and review. Don't forget to subscribe. Your rating and review just helps us push this out to more and more people and continue to grow our audience and hopefully positively affect a ton of people out there that really need this and, and want this. So uh, the other thing I've got for you is a free ebook on my website. So go on to venturedproperties.com, venturedproperties.com. 
and download our free ebook on real estate and on syndication. And I've got some data points in there, some really good stuff for you. So I'd love to have you take a look at that. It's free. I'm not expecting anything from it. Uh, and, and also look, if you want some help in multifamily, want some help learning, growing, getting your business off the ground, I would love to talk to you about what it would look like uh, to work with me potentially and see if that's a good fit. So you can go up to coachwithdex.com and check that out and uh, we can definitely have a, uh, a call. Thanks a lot for listening. You make it a fantastic rest of the day. I'll catch you on the next episode.